Hey everyone, John Reed here, author of 50 Things to See with a Telescope. This is part three in the series on the Celestron PowerSeeker 70 EQ Telescope. And in this video, we're gonna do whatever it takes to capture an image just like the one shown here on the box using this telescope. So I've chosen the image of the Orion Nebula because it's the brightest nebula in the Northern Hemisphere sky at this time of the year. Now, as an experiment, I took a series of one second exposures with an iPhone attached to the included 20 millimeter eyepiece just to see what it would look like. This is because if there was enough detail in these one second exposures, hypothetically, I could stack hundreds of those frames together and make a decent image. But when I looked at the exposures, I could immediately tell that I'd really need to step up my game to get the image. Well, I'll show you how I did it. This is Learn to Stargaze. So if we want to take a picture of space, the first thing we're going to need to do is take this telescope off this cheap mount because this mount will not cut it. But this telescope does not come with a Vixen dovetail, so it's not currently designed to fit onto better mounts. Well, I have a Vixen dovetail right here, so let's take this telescope off this mount and see if we can mount it onto this bracket, and then we can move it onto a proper mount. Now, fortunately, the screws on the bottom of this telescope actually thread it right into this, this dovetail here, so that was pretty easy. So the telescope Celestron probably used to take the pretty pictures on the box that they used to advertise this telescope probably looks something like this. So I'm gonna poach the parts from this telescope and put them onto this telescope. Let's see how this goes. I don't think we're gonna need this many counterweights. So the camera we're gonna to use to take the picture is the ZWO294MC Pro. Now this is a designated astronomy camera and we've got a nice big CCD chip to catch all the photons from space and this camera actually cools itself so we'll probably cool it down to minus 10 degrees and that will help eliminate a lot of the noise from the image. Let's see if I trust this or not. The threads are the same size. Yep, look at that. <laughs> Now I'm gonna put on the ASI Air, and this will um, help me remotely control the camera and the mount from my iPhone. <laughs> All right, let's balance this thing. All right, so now we just wait till sunset. All right, so here we are at night and we've got the scope all set up again. So right now I need to go through the alignment process for the mount and then try and get this telescope in focus with this camera using a bright star. Now, uh, this can be a convoluted and complicated process and it might take me about 30 minutes. Hopefully I can do it faster because in about 40 minutes, the Orion Nebula is gonna go behind the neighbor's house. Wish me luck. All right, now with the mount aligned, we're gonna pass control over to the cell phone here, to the ASI Air app. And so from here, we'll be able to control the mount and the camera just from the phone. All right, so we just started to focus the telescope and we got it plate solved on the target and in two seconds, we'll have our first image. Not too bad. What we're gonna do now is take flat so that we can get rid of this vignette around the image and it'll also uh, correct for any dust that's on the lens or on the camera itself. So to take the flat calibration frames, what I'm gonna do is use this light panel and put it over the lens of the telescope. And then I'm gonna take exposures so that the histogram has a value of about 30,000. And after I've confirmed those settings, I'm gonna take 15 of these flat photos and stack them together into a single flat calibration image that will combine with the light frame image we'll take of the object and that will flatten the image and get rid of any vignetting or any dust spots. All right, so we have 12 seconds left before we get our first calibrated exposure of M42 on the screen. 
and this is going to take the light frame that it's taking now and add it to the flat frame that we did with the flat panel there and a dark calibration frame that I took earlier. And let's see if it worked. I'm really excited here. Very nice. Look at that. Okay. Let's adjust our histogram here. Just a little bit. And there we go, we did it. So there is the Orion Nebula. I'll do a screenshot here. <laughs> With this telescope at about the same quality as you found on the box. So um, we're gonna let this take a couple more exposures, bring out some more of the signal in the noise because we are in a city and uh, I don't have a light pollution filter on here. Um, but uh, it actually looks pretty decent. You can tell this is not a uh, photography gray telescope. If we look at the images in the corner, they've got quite a bit of aberration. The stars aren't round and whatnot, um, but you know. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do a really quick and dirty processing job on this image to recreate the image just as it's shown on the box. So I've airdropped the image here onto my Mac I'm going to drop it into Photoshop. I'm going to crop it just like it is on the box. So image crop, and I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees. All right, there we go. We're almost there. I'm going to use these uh, astronomy action tools here just to uh, brighten up that nebula. And then we've got some little blue halos around the stars. So I'm going to get rid of those with a click. And it's looking pretty darn good at this point. Let me just give it a quick adjustment to the curve. Just like that. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Not bad. One more thing here. I'm gonna go into camera raw, get rid of some of this noise. And there you have it. I, I really think at this point, we have replicated the image on the box. Well, I hope you enjoyed this three-part series on the Celestron PowerSeeker 70 EQ telescope. I hope you learned as much from watching it as I learned while making it. And if you have a telescope at home, please check out my book, 50 Things to See with a Telescope or 50 Things to See on the Moon. These books are available in English, French, and Spanish. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any future videos. And remember, the future is looking up.